All right, so we'll finish up section 1.5 here in this video. Um, we're talking about transformations. There are three kinds of transformations. Uh, shifting a graph, reflecting a graph, and then vertically stretching or compressing a graph. Okay, those are the three, you know, and they will come up. Okay, now I, I mentioned that, you know, w w one nice thing about knowing transformations is you already know the answer. You know, like it is, it, it it saves a, a boatload of time versus someone who's stuck, uh, you know, point plotting, you know, and having to get the graph that way. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this example here next. We want to write a formula for f of x equals the square root of x flipped upside down and shifted to the left two units. Okay, I'll call the new function g of x. Now, if I'm flipping this upside down, that means I need to throw a negative in front of the of the function. Okay, and then if I'm going to the left two units, I need to replace x with x plus 2. So the answer is going to be g of x equals negative the square root of x plus 2. Okay, here is another one. Where does the point 8, negative 4 on f of x go on the graph of g of x equals f of x plus 1 minus 1. Okay, now I have no idea what f looks like. I don't care. I don't need to know that. I just need to know where, where's this point going to land when I compute this transformation. Okay, so if I replace x with x plus 1, that means that I'm shifting the graph to the left one unit. Okay, so instead of 8, negative 4, it's going to be at 7, negative 4. And then the minus 1 means I'm going to have to shift down one unit. Okay, so I'm at 7, negative 4. When I go down one unit, I'll be at 7, negative 5. Okay, so this point, 8, negative 4, would be at the point 7, negative 5 when, when we move the graph. Okay. Uh, here's another problem. It says, where does the point negative 12, 6 on f of x go to on g of x equals negative 2 times f of x? Okay, well, um, I have a vertical stretch. Also, I'm flipping the graph upside down, right, because that's a negative 2. Regardless of, of that, okay, I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all the y values by the stretch factor. Okay, so I need to multiply the y value on this point by negative 2. That's going to bring me to the point negative 12, negative 12. The end. Okay. Here's uh, another one. This is the graph of y equals f of x is shown right there. We want to graph y equals 2 times f of x minus 1, uh, times f of negative x, sorry. Um, Okay, so here's f of x. f of negative x means that I'm going to flip the graph about the y-axis. Okay, so negative 2, negative 1 is going to be at 2, negative 1. Negative 1, 2 would be at 1, 2. And 3, 1 would be at negative 3, 1. Okay, so there's that graph. And then uh, if I multiply by 2, okay, I'm going to have a vertical stretch of this graph. So to get the new result, all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all the y values on these points by 2. So negative 3, 1 is going to go to negative 3, 2. 1, 2 is going to go to 1, 4. And 2, negative 1 is going to go to 2, negative 2. Okay, and this graph here would be my answer. Uh, here's another example. So describe how the function f of x equals 5 times x minus 2 squared plus 3 is graphed from the uh, curve y equals x squared. Okay, so we're going to do more of this uh, later on when we get into, uh, into uh, chapter 3. But um, uh, the first thing is uh, y equals 5 times x squared. Well, that means I'm going to multiply all the y values by 5. Okay, and then if I replace x with x minus 2, 
I'm going to shift the graph to the right two units. Okay, and then plus three at the end means you're going to have to go up three units. Okay, with all the points. So if I apply these transformations in that order, I would get or to 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 this curve here. I I end up getting the graph of f of x. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll do some more of this here uh, later on. So this is kind of an intro to some things uh, later. Okay, um, the. Uh, Last thing to know in the section is a definition that says, let f be a function. If f of negative x equals f of x for all x, then f is called an even function. And the reason why we care about that is f it would be symmetric to the y-axis. Okay, so if you spin the graph about the y-axis, you get the same picture. That's what it means to be symmetric to the y-axis. Um, if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all x, then f is called an odd function, and f would be symmetric to the origin. Symmetric to the origin means that the graph contains the point x, y, and negative x, negative y on it. Okay. Um, now, the reason why it's helpful to know if a graph is symmetric is because that would reduce the amount of point plotting you have. You know, like if, if I'm graphing some curve and I know that the curve is symmetric to the y-axis, then any point that I plot on the right side of the y-axis, that same point is going to be on the left side. Okay, and so that would save time ideally with, with uh, graphing that curve. Now what about symmetry to the x-axis? I didn't mention anything with that. Why, why not? Well, if you have a graph that's symmetric to the x-axis, it's not a function. And I have a function. Okay, so if we have a function, it would either be symmetric to the y-axis or to the origin or, or neither one. Okay, uh, let's take a look at some examples. So, I'm gonna, so I have a function here, and I want us to determine if the function is even or odd or neither. And then based on what we say about that, we'll then state any symmetry that would be on the graph. Okay. Um, well, regardless if a function is even or odd, notice how in the definition here, I'm always starting off with f of negative x. And I'm just going to see where the road takes me with that. So if I, so if I compute f of negative x, replace x with a negative x, uh, and also make sure to have parentheses around the negative x's, negative x to the fourth is the same as x to the fourth. You got the 5 in front, so it'd be 5x to the 4th leading off. And negative x squared is the same as x squared, so it'd be a minus 3x squared plus 1. Okay, now that expression is the same thing as I was originally given. Okay, so that's equal to f of x. Okay, f of negative x equals f of x. Well, that means that I have uh, an even function. Okay, and why I care about that is because an even function is always going to be symmetric to the y-axis. Okay, so if I were going to graph this curve here, uh, any point that I plot on the right side of the y-axis, that same point is going to be on the left side of the y-axis. You know, so, so it'd be helpful to, to know that, you know. Okay, so uh, how about uh, this next one? g of x equals x squared minus 4x cubed. So let's start by computing g of negative x. And uh, we'll just see where the road takes us with that. So replace x with a negative x. You got two x's that replace. And negative x squared minus 4 times negative x cubed. Okay. Negative x squared is the same thing as x squared. Um, and negative x cubed is the same thing as negative x cubed but without the parentheses. Okay, so I got x squared minus a negative means plus uh, 4x cubed. Okay, now this guy here is not the same as the original function. Right, we got a minus sign, Who's here we, here we got a plus sign. So the function, in other words, is not even. 
Okay, now I want to see if the function is odd. So what does it mean to be odd? It means that uh, f of negative x has to be equal to negative f of x. Okay, well there's g of negative x. I need to find negative g of x and see if those are the same thing. So negative g of x means to take negative the whole thing. Uh, so I got negative x squared minus 4x cubed. And when I distribute the negative into those two terms there, it's going to be negative x, negative x squared plus 4x cubed. Okay, uh, well that's not the same as g of negative x, right? Because I, I should get a, a positive x squared leading off. I don't have that. So um, uh, negative g of x is not the same as g of negative x. Okay, so the function is not odd. Uh, it's not even, it's not odd, so it's neither even or odd. And um, there is no symmetry then on a graph that would not be even or odd. Okay. Uh, here's another example. So what if we had the function h of x equals 5x cubed minus x? Okay, well, uh, h of negative x means that I need to replace x with a negative x. So I got two x's there to replace. I got five times negative x cubed minus negative x. Negative x cubed is the same as negative x cubed, but without the parentheses. You got the five in front, so it'll be negative five x cubed leading off, and then plus x. Okay, now that is not the same as the original function. So, h is not an even function. Okay, now I want to know if h is an odd function. What does it mean to be odd? It means that h of negative x would have to be equal to negative h of x. So let's go ahead and compute negative h of x next. Negative h of x means to take negative the whole thing of 5x cubed minus x. So then when we distribute the negative there, we have negative 5x cubed plus x. Okay, that, that's the same thing as h of negative x. In other words, the, these were the same thing here. So because of that, because h of negative x equals negative h of x, h would be an odd function. Okay, and an odd function is symmetric to the origin. So any point that I plot, x, y, the opposite of that point is also going to be on the graph. Negative x, negative y would also be on the graph. Okay, and that, again, can help me, you know, if I'm graphing a curve to, to, to notice that. Okay, uh, so, all right, well, that's it with section 1.5. Uh, here's the homework problems that I would like you to look at. And um, in the next video, we'll start in on 1.6.